In today's episode, we're diving into a Fallout 3 mod that focuses on one character that defined the game, Moira Brown. Is this mod just pro-Moira propaganda, or does it hold something more? Join me as we explore the wastes with a friend, make a settlement of our own, and engage in some post-apocalyptic hanky-panky. Wait, what? Ooh, <laughs> sounds like fun! Tell me, what better way to start our journey than a Bethesda game? Our first episode brings us to a title you might love or hate, Fallout 3. This was my introduction to the series, and it's one I hold the least fondness for. I get why it's the best Fallout to some, and I had fun when I was like 15, but it aged poorly compared to New Vegas. Its narrative chops were lacking, and its portrayal of DC was forgettable. But I will say, out of all the characters I remember in Fallout 3, the one I remember the most is Moira Brown. Hey, I hear you're that stray from the vault. Oh, I haven't seen one of you for years. If you don't know her, she's the owner of Kratosite Supply, the main merchant of Megaton. For a lady living in a town with a literal nuke, she is surprisingly chipper. There's definitely problems in the world and can be a bit naive about them, but her optimism is infectious. She views it all like a mosaic. The world can't be what it was before the bombs dropped, so it's important to make the best thing you can. No, it's like... Uh, did you ever try to put a broken piece of glass back together? Even if the pieces fit, you can't make it whole again the way it was. But if you're clever, you can still use the pieces to make other useful things. Maybe even something wonderful, like a mosaic. Well, the world broke just like the glass, and everyone's trying to put it back together like it was. But it'll never come together the same way. It's honestly one of the best lines from Fallout 3. She wants the world to be a better place, and her main quest, the Wasteland Survival Guide, is all about that. Since it's one of the game's longest quests, you spend a lot of time with her as you decide to help or hinder her dreams. So I get why people like and hate her. Her speaking voice and chipper outlook can be grating to some people, whilst others find it endearing. And even though she is a polarizing character, somebody had one very important question about Moira. What if I could f her? Okay. Okay, that's selling the mod short and I'm being a bit of a dick. I first heard about this mod on a Reddit post talking about one where you can help and romance her. God, that feels weird to put it that way. Now, most of you would look at this and go, oh sweet, some extra quests to expand the world, and I just laser focused on the romance option. Love stories hold a special place in my heart. I love the cheesy, the sweet, all that stuff. So I was very curious about how this mod would make a love story out of a decidedly unromantic character. To my surprise, the romance in this game is a small fraction of the whole mod. It's still a noticeable part, but it has a lot to show beyond that. The mod in question, Kratosite Enterprises, was created by Nexus user Grigori Prime back in 2014 to 2015. I can't help but imagine the bloke as Father Grigori from Half-Life, but as a Transformer. The mod allows you to recruit Moira as a companion and to expand her business, changing Megaton and beyond. This has a lot going on for it, and we're going to dive into it now. To start this mod once you have it installed, you need to do two things. Diffuse the bomb in Megaton, and finish the Wasteland Survival Guide properly. This isn't a mod for evil characters, so if you're looking to go all postal in this mother, look elsewhere. Moira is too pure for that shit. and if you're not here to simp for her, whether romantically or platonically, get out of here. Once you do those two things, you can ask her to join you on your adventures, and here's where the first immersion-breaking part of the mod begins. Ooh, <laughs> sounds like fun! But for that, I need an assistant to test my theories and run Craterside Supply. As you can tell, Moira's voice work is done by splicing existing voice clips. It's very noticeable. On one hand, I respect the choice. It makes sense to use what you have rather than hiring a VA that could sound jarring. On the other hand, these are also voice clips you have heard whilst completing the Wasteland Survival Guide. So if you're starting this entire thing after you finish that quest, you're going to be hearing a lot of repeated stuff. This is also true with combat, which acts the same way combat with companions work in the base game. Since Moira's combat lines are normally for fleeing, those haven't changed. She can fight back now, but she's still going to sound like she's running away. Honestly, it's very funny to see Moira sound terrified as she's laying waste to raiders with a minigun. 
It gets weirder, though, when she picks weapons from corpses when you're not looking. Oh, oh no! Oh, excuse me, Moira, quick question. Where did you get a fucking nuke? I could've fucking died, what is wrong with- Once Moira properly joins you, she has two hidden bars, adventure and romance. By going to more sciency areas of the wastes, such as the Underworld or Rivet City's lab, she gets points to make her more assertive in combat and ready to fight. Hell, when you max it out, she gets her own power armor. Wait, Moira, where did you learn to wear that? This also applies to certain quests too, where you can get more points depending on how you finish them. Not only that, but she writes down some research logs too, and you get to see what she thinks. I honestly really like these logs. It helps expand Moira without seeming too out of character, and they're much more natural than the voice splicing you hear in the mod proper. She even mentions you by name in here. In hindsight, I shouldn't have named my lone wanderer Nutella. That's a good name, don't you think? One thing that makes her stand out compared to vanilla companions is that you can help each other level up skills. If you have a high level in, say, big guns, you can then teach her how to use them more efficiently and can also get a weapon for your troubles too. The reverse can also happen where she can help you raise some of your weaker skills, like barter. This is somewhat game-breaking, especially if you train her in energy weapons. You can get an alien blaster variant that's practically impossible to break. This isn't a mod for people who want to make their game harder. But this mod isn't just about Moira. It's also about Crater Side Supply and how it expands with your help. So many of the quests you do can update Crater Side Supply. Finish that quest where you search for Nuka Cola Quantum? Boom! You got a robot to protect the store. Finish Blood Ties without blood shed? You can help them make a proper shop to trade with. Help those slave kids escape Paradise Falls? Boom! You can adopt one, and now you got a daughter! She's got her own room now! It's a neat way to expand the world and makes Moira's mosaic philosophy a reality. Sometimes it easily breaks the illusion, however. There's a quick nod to Green Lantern that felt too on the nose even for Fallout, but that's one reason these mods are fun. Copyright doesn't matter and canon is a suggestion rather than scripture. All of the affected quests for this are in the mod's readme, so you don't have to flounder aimlessly unless you want to. Also, there's a pygmy mold ramp that joins you if you want and... Okay, I don't get this little guy at all. I just ignored him and let him stay at Crater Side. He's a bit too squishy for my liking. Does anyone get this? But it doesn't stop there. If you help Canterbury Commons out with the Superhuman Gambit and upgrade the merchants there, you are given a chance to expand Crater Side Supply with a brand new shop and a fully voiced NPC named Grieger. Bonjour, mon ami. In this story, he's an old mate of Moira's who helps you expand the business. Oh, we used to hang out back when she lived here. We tinker around with the old robots or try to make ant repellent or whatnot. Good times. Honestly, when the mod makes its own stories like these separate from the game, it's the best part. And I wish the mod was more focused on this new stuff over just adding to the vanilla game. Wait a second. Grieger? Like... Grigori Prime? Is that a self-insert? Honestly, that's a cute touch, if it is. Suffice to say, I prefer hearing someone not spliced up. Even if it's not a mind-blowing performance, it fits the world. Hell, if you're a lady, you can flirt with him for cheaper prices using the Black Widow perk, but I'm here for Moira, thank you very much. Nutella is quite monogamous. But it doesn't stop there. You can make a distillery with Moriarty and Megaton, and if you get some of that booze, you can meet up with Moira and create a side supply after a lot of these quests. You both get drunk and decide, wait a second, we can expand Megaton to those broken highways, let's do that, and you get a quest to make a brand new town. This includes finding a whole ass crane to fix that sh**. Much like plenty of the quests in this mod, you will need to have done a vanilla quest, Riley's Ranges, to finish it. This area is called Megaton Towers, and now the Capital Wasteland has a new town. Since it's part of said wastes, rather than its own section like Megaton, it can feel a little laggy at times, but it didn't get to the point of being unplayable. There's a lot to add, including two new voiced characters, Pritchard, your new godhead with a pet Yaogwai, and Mr. Parsons, a bartender ghoul who used to be a big deal in DC before the bombs dropped. Even with the difference in audio quality, they do feel like they could have been in Fallout, and it's a shame you don't get to meet them early in the mod. And it's really cool to see this new town made just for...
Moira? <laughs> Moira, where did you get that fucking hat? Apparently, you get a hat proving you're the mayor of this settlement, and it's fucking hysterical to see Moira wear power armor with a top hat. The sheer absurdity of that makes this mod so worth it. So, in conclusion, there's a lot involved with... What? Huh? What? Uh-huh. I forgot to talk about the romance, the main reason I wanted to try this shit. I don't know, I have a lot of problems with it. Might, might put a damper on things. No? Okay. Okay, I'll talk about it. Jesus. While I love the romance genre and video games have some standout examples, a lot of games are really bad at exploring love. After all, mechanizing something that is intimate and personal can easily turn uncanny. Love is obviously more than, say, X things amount of time and unlock kissing, but a lot of times it becomes a system you game. This is no exception. After you stop spending time with Moira, you can later unlock for Romance Round 2 and choose to keep the partnership platonic or start something more. If you decide to go romantic, you're given an option to say a romantic line that gives a slight boost to this previously mentioned romance bar every day. And the higher your romance bar is, the more romantic lines you can get. They're, shall we say, bad. This isn't like, say, a dating sim, where you choose the phrase that would be most romantic or even a disastrous phrase. Here, it's all going straight to steadily rising that invisible bar. And that's weird, right? There's something immersion-breaking about doing it this way, and the fact that it's splicing voice clips makes it all the more artificial. Do you remember how Rise of the Skywalker used already filmed clips of Carrie Fisher before she died and you could tell that wasn't the context the footage was made for? It's like that. In normal quest stuff, that's fine. But for a romance, it's just wrong. And if you get that bar high enough, you can engage in some... Spiciness? It's just one scene that you can repeat, and it's a fate of black so you're not seeing anything, but... What sort of dance? Cha-cha? Merengue? I've always fancied the foxtrot myself. <sighs> oh. <laughs> oh. I'm not a prude, but I think the mod would have been better without this. It's not that sex scenes themselves are bad, but splicing voice clips to make one is neither romantic nor sexy. Well, at least she enjoyed herself according to this diary, which I was totally allowed to read. After your romance bar gets as high as it can, you have the option to propose to Moira. Obviously, she says yes. What? Really? Really? You really mean that? You and me. Together? Well, all right! Can you imagine if the rug was pulled under you and she just broke up with you? That'd be hilarious, but that's probably why I'm not making these mods. All you need to do is pay the Church of Adam, and you have a big celebration. Well, as big as Fallout Free's engine allows for. You say your I do's, drink a little radiation, and boom! You're married! You even get a ring that boosts XP gains and lows your charisma. It's a cute touch even if the ring stats don't amount for much. But don't worry, I'm not throwing this ring away. What kind of husband do you think I am? That's how this mod ends. Me and Moira married as mares in our modded Megaton Metropolis. There are far worse ways it could have ended, but it can feel a little disappointing. With these new characters, you would expect some more questing, but that's not really a thing. Instead, it's here's some money to make the business or settlement better. This mod is so intertwined in Fallout 3's vanilla quests that it's impossible to separate from, unless you're using console commands to get to the good stuff. So if you didn't like Fallout 3's quests to begin with, you're gonna have to do them anyway to try the stuff in this mod. On one hand, playing through them did help me appreciate them more than I did when I first played Fallout 3 a while back. On the other hand, it's still Fallout 3 with all the problems Fallout 3 had. I think this mod shows both what makes mods great and bad. They're passion projects through and through, and that means people will add stuff because they like it. But adding stuff you like can be counterintuitive to good design. But I can't be mad about it, and I respect all the hard work Grigori Prime did. It's like fanfiction, but I don't think fanfiction is a bad word. Plenty of fanfiction can be worthwhile to read. Like the Divine Comedy. I'm not going to give these mods a score, per se. Review scores feel inappropriate since the standards are pretty different. Instead, here's who I think this mod suits. 
This mod is for Fallout 3 fans who like free for what it is. If you love the quests, the world, but want a little bit more of it, Crater Side Enterprises is for you. Replaying Fallout 3's quests with Moira Brown besides you adds a fun factor you wouldn't get alone. It adds extra incentive. Plus, the new stuff that comes later is a nice touch, and not what I expected. If you're okay with a little bit of artificiality, I think that's worth the low cost of admission. But, if you aren't big into Fallout 3, Moira Brown, or awkwardly done romance, this isn't for you. If you didn't like Moira to begin with, it won't make you suddenly fond of her. And since so much of this mod is connected to Fallout 3's quests, you're railroaded to finish them as a good boy if you want to see what this mod offers. Some mods use the initial game as a stepping stone for something totally different, and this isn't one of them. Treat Crater Side Enterprises as an expansion pack for better and for worse. Now, if you excuse me, I need to engage in some ultraviolence with my fake wife. Thank you so much for watching this. This was something different for me, and it's been a lot of work getting this video together. The algorithm is pretty weird, so every like and comment counts. Are there mods you want me to try out for the series? Would you give Crater Side Enterprises a shot? I'd love to hear your feedback. There's plenty of mods out there, and I want to try as many as possible. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.